We are live. What is happening? I'm going to wait for someone to get on before I start chit-chatting. I'm pretty sure I can edit this out to can I? I don't know. Doing these a lot. Anyway, guys, so um, I'll just literally... Let me do this real quick. There you go. What? Are you kidding me? The lock in this position. Um, anyway, so I was just, you know, sitting on my computer. was open, and I was... Um, scrummaging through old photos and uh, a picture was up from my college days back in the day so I was like you know what let's just do a little quick live here and kind of give my reasonings and some the reason why I don't do I don't do lie uh, night or not and simply for um, I don't do night or not not because it accuses people of anything because I don't feel like Especially if you're looking at Greg's Night or Not type videos, they're not, if people actually watch them, they're not actually telling people that, you know, someone is Natty or not. He does, he'll say that they're Natty or they're not Natty, and which is cool. And they'll, you know, give them the whole spectrum and give them reasons why. So for the people who actually do watch the Natty or Not videos that Greg does, you probably see that he's not picking up people, not trying to stick up for them like that. I'm just saying, the reason why I still don't do Natty or Not videos um is because the sheer fact that i've been through um that you know being told that i'm on steroids when i wasn't and i've been and played with athletes that look like they're juiced to the tits and they're not because i've known some of these guys for my life and their own um you know just their how they are when it comes to steroids and stuff and I've seen some amazing physiques to this day that I would be like, that anyone would say, you know, they're definitely not natural. And I find that the, that culture, um, I think Greg's trying to do away with that culture that's better, but it's, it's still not being um, reset, like received by a majority of people um, on YouTube because it still has a very negative connotation of people thinking, you're, you're, you're accusing me of doing something. I put it this way, think of this. If I said, you know, my hair, is, this is my hair. But at one point, I did have extensions, not in anywhere. Like, I'm talking like two years ago, I did. If someone's like, Johnny's hair is not natural um, now. And I'm like, yes, it is. But like, I'm going to do a video on Johnny's hair. And here's my reasons why I don't think Johnny's hair is natural. And you go back to pictures where I had, you know, extensions, whatever. But the truth is that my hair is natural. Is that person wrong for saying that? No, there's a lot of reasons why. That gives that person the the uh, the right or the opinion to say that person's not natural. Now, if I was completely bald and someone's like, this hair's not natural, then it's like you're an idiot. Either way, I thought I would kind of show you guys some pictures from my old uh, college days. And you guys can actually see, you know, what a person might look like. And I was natural. So here's one thing. I When I was growing up, I, I hated I hated steroids, I've said before. I hated cheaters. You know, that was me. If you're, you're a cheater, this and that. There's a team back in high school that was like, I looked like they're all on D ball, I swear to God, you know. And they were huge and they were good. And we I, and I just hated the whole cheating thing. And we knew some guys were on steroids. So for me, the first time I actually took a supplement was I was pissed at my mom one day because I got home and um, she she threw some stuff out of mine because we just had a tips back in the day anyway. But um, I was pissed and I was like, screw this, man. I'm just going to go do my own thing. And I went and ran, I went to the store and, and bought Mammoth 2500 thinking that that would actually help me out. I bought like a thing of creatine or just a monohydrate and drank that normal, which was like nasty as hell. It was back when uh, Mark McGuire was hitting home runs and shit. So I was, I was at the point where I always thought literally that I can take stuff, supplements over the counter and get these absolutely amazing results. And because of my genetics, I literally thought that all the supplements, all of them, but I can only really afford um, protein. It was a weight gainer that made me shit my face off. I got a funny shitty story about that, no pun intended. No pun intended. Uh, but anyway, so I'll just kind of get to it. But so I'm trying to give you guys an idea. So this is this is me. So I want to go back to so if like let's say somebody did a nat or not. Let's let's put it this way. Let's say, let's say uh, Philion, Greg, more plates of dates, whatever, did a nat or not on me. They would, do, they would do their due diligence and go back and see the consistencies in my life. So, right? So, they'd be like, let me see if he's whatever. So, let's go back. And I'm going to go back as far as I can get pictures. So, um, this, the earliest picture I have is, this is me. So, 
this is me in two, I am 21 here. This is, I, I moved to London. That's my little room. Look at my freaking massive traps and be trying to be sexy with a little kid. Look at that. What was I doing? Look at that, right? So I was a fairly, you know, I was always kind of like pretty built, right? So this is one of my favorite ones to kind of show people when they're like, oh, whatever. Um, like this is this is my brother. There you go. So there's me at a young age still with a pretty fairly decent physique, right? Um, I'm going to check this out. So this is my favorite one to show people when they're like genetics, genetics, whatever. Oh, where the fuck's my mouse at? Boom. So this is me 21 years old. Natty, right? This is what you call good genetics. You know, I'm not one of those guys who's like, say, oh, I got the sweetest genetics ever. But this is me at 21 years of age. Um, I was on welfare. I lived in this apartment that uh, had um, was infested with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Ticks or whatever. My cat had ticks, a little cat I showed you. I couldn't afford, it was bad. It was, but this is me without having enough money for proper nutrition, supplements whatever um i was on a eat when i could and party when i could diet 21 years old so um so so when i so put it this way when i first started in the gym i was 11 years old when i first started in the gym my uncle is a um is a professional tennis coach a you know football player an ex you know university football player and I was playing football at a really young age and he brought me to the gym to train with him. So I had good coaching right from the start of being an athlete. So as soon as I was in the gym, my first time being in the gym, I had a coach with me. My uncle was my coach. It is black genetics. They're good genetics. I'm telling you, man, like it's, you know, it's, 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 you can, that's why like doing nine or nots on like us, I don't want to say sound like, you know, racist or whatever. And I'm not, but we all do know that people from Africa have a very, very, are very, very genetically gifted when it comes to their physiques. Look, just look at the continent of Africa. Look at the physiques that come out of Africa. I'm talking like from your Middle Eastern, um, you know, all of them. Look, just look at all of them. You know, look at the little big rainbows guys, little big chests. You know what I'm saying? Huge chest, pigeon chest, black guys. You know, we all have really good um, genetics. You know what I mean? So... At a young age, this is me at 21. So this is me 21. They're going to go fast forward to, um, I'm going to fast forward to my first year at St. Mary's. So this is my first year of college. I wonder if you can see anything here. You can't, but here's my, there's me. So by the time I'm here at college, I'm 217 pounds. From here, so I am twenty uh, five this year, and I was twenty one when you saw me. Um, what kind of workouts do you do since the gyms? I have a really nice gym at home, so I'm you know I got a good gym, and whatnot, right? Uh, so I'm basically doing a push pull legs, but a lot of it will be very compound because I don't have machines in the house. I got a good two tower pulley system and whatnot. Still, so. anyway. So that's my first year. Um, I switched positions uh, throughout my career. I ended up playing defense and then um, slot back. So I had to kind of like, I would say, diet down. I didn't even consist. I didn't really diet down, diet down. Okay, hold on a sec. There's one. There's 24. So this is right before I went to St. Mary's. So me eating in that. So it's the same. That's me. At, uh, I think it was like 217 pounds. All right. Now we're going to go to, so 2010, this is my favorite one to show. I kind of posted these already. This is me um, in 2010. So let's just put, it, put, thing, put things in uh, perspective. Right now, 2010, if you guys are bodybuilding fans at all, Flex Lewis was already full into his you know, career and I'm playing football. So I thought about this. If I would have started my career as a bodybuilder when I was 20, how would I look right now? You know what I mean? So here's one picture. And again, this is 2010. I'm on a similar diet. 
um, as when I was 21. Didn't have much money. Um, and this is even my water bottle. Those aren't my gloves. Um, these are 15 bucks from the store, uh, from what do you call it? Like shoppers for, they're actually for your ankles. We use these to spat because they're fun. I found these, um, these shoes I actually got on discount with a buddy. We both uh, put money in to get, you know, um, shoes together on eastbay.com. So Phil Heath will dominate this year, 100%. No, no question. So there's me right there on the bench practicing. There you go. So that's my physique in 2010. That is 10 years ago, right? So 27 years old. BMI, I don't know. Um, right there, the, my weight, height and weight here, height and weight, I was five foot seven, um, and I was 190, I graduated 198 pounds. So, and our coach did do um, calipers. So my body fat for our, for our class, for ours, our class, at our school, our strength conditioning coach and D coordinator had made sure that he was a um, student of Charles Poliquin, trained with him, um, practiced, studied with him, and he ended up being our coach. He had every class had to be, every class, every um, position had to be a certain body fat percentage. So your skill positions, running backs, receivers, um, you had to be uh, 15% body fat or less on the bio sig, right? So your bio sig is your seven point, whatever. Um, and then your alignment had to be like, 20, couldn't be more than 20% body fat. I'm talking like, that's what he wanted. Anyway, so right here, I actually remember when I did it, my body fat percentage here on the caliper test, I remember it was around like 10%. My buddy was like eight. And I'm talking, this is natural. Again, we're getting tested randomly throughout the year. So you can't go on gear because if you do, you'll get caught, right? So here's the squad. Here's our practice squad. This is during the summertime. The guys who are left here, um, this is what, uh, these are the guys that we practice with, you know, when they're in, in the summertime. So um, all Canadian, all Canadian, our quarterback, um, another all Canadian, another all Canadian. He's professional. He's a professional. And these guys are natty. These guys are all natural, right? So you can argue for sure that, you know, I wasn't natural or was based on my consistency. You guys either say I got unreal genetics or I've been on steroids my entire life. I got, I have those kind of genetics where um, sometimes I feel like when I started bodybuilding, it didn't, I didn't have to use much at all to get results. And I'll show you my first. So after, so this is when I finished a year after this, so this is 2010, 2011 came, a year after that I graduated. I, could, I think I'm going to show you some pictures when I finished playing ball in my first year competing. So first year competing, where are we at? So I'll skip, I'll fast forward you to this. Actually, I'll show you, it's pretty crazy. This is my physique. Um, this is my first year competing. Now, I'll show you something absolutely insane. This is my first... So this is after my first show, okay? I did one show, and then I did this show. So I did provincials, then did, then did nationals, okay? That is July, and I'll show you my pictures of me when I was... Um, let me see, where is it at here? If I can find it. If I can find a picture of me first competing back in the day, that would be awesome. Actually, you know what? I'll be able to find it on here. Either way, I'll show you. Actually, this is hilarious. This is the funniest thing you ever see. So, facial recognition, suckers. You can't see my shit. I need people seeing my stuff. Got guys posting everyone's shit. All right. Um, let me see pictures. If you see any BBCs on here, it's because I... <laughs> it's from freak. Anyway. Uh, it's, it's, it's Cali Muscles, if you wonder if you saw it. Uh, anyway, let's go up, let's go up, let's go up, let's go up, go up, 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 where the freaking picture go? Sorry, guys, I'm wasting your time here. All right. 
coming up soon. It's coming up soon. It's pretty funny. It's actually just okay. So I want you guys to see the difference. Okay, this is my first show. That's Greg. That's Greg's um, show when he won nationals. I mean, won uh, provincials. That was a show that I was supposed to beat him. Yada yada, and I didn't. Clearly, I didn't. He's definitely better. So that's me. My first show ever. And this is. This is nationals. Um, this so this is March, all right. This is March, okay. And this is July. So between, I'll give. Let me give you a front double buy so you kind of see the difference. So there's my front double buy. That's nationals. Let's do this. So that's nationals, nationals, July, my first show, right? I was 217 pounds again here. Here I was 220, I was 226 pounds. No, 20, 225 and a half pounds. I couldn't get down to heavyweight. So I ended up being super heavyweight my first year. So I went from light heavy, from heavyweight, I went from heavyweight to super heavyweight and within four months and a year before this I looked like so if you want to see natural not a year before that let's say where's those pictures of my last time playing football um well go have them either way so give you guys give you guys an idea. I didn't look much different from this. My last year of football, I looked basically just like this. Right? I looked just like that um, the year after. After that, I end up looking like this. So can you tell the difference between steroids, not steroids? Right? Not or not. Every year before that, you can be like, well, okay, right? But you see this, whoops. This is a picture that you're like, oh, because if I, obviously I'm not natural because I'm in a freaking bodybuilding show that's open. But either way. And here's a simple reason why I don't do natty or not. Because this one, you can say I'm natural. I, I'm not natural. This one, you can say I am definitely not natural. You can both say I'm not natural in both of these. And you can be right in both of these. But I'm not going to be the guy that goes that road. Right? Because I just don't want to. I don't really care to. Now, do I think now the response people are having? Well, the response people have to Night or Not, and that's going to be on my next video. My next, uh, one of my next uh, videos will be videos, will be actually insecurity in the fitness industry. Literally, that will be my next, one of my next videos, I have it on my list downstairs, will be on insecurities in the fitness industry. I came from this sport, okay? You guys got to understand something here. And this is funny because I want to actually like repeat. I'm going to put this on. Actually, this is going up regardless. But this is a sport where the guy across me that you can't see, I'm talking so much fucking shit to. I'm talking the most mess to this guy. Every single thing I can say to get this guy out of his game, I am saying it to him. We learned to have some thick ass skin. Nothing bugged you. Because again, too, after talking shit in games, you end up like knocking the hell over. You know, you can punch him in the mouth. So we talk shit and punch him in the mouth with your helmet, right? When I first got here, okay, when I got to this sport, and this is pretty freaking insane, okay? Listen to this. I want you guys to listen. Listen to me. I want you to listen to me and listen to me very, very clear when I say this. The football team that I played on was basically like, I would say, one of your bigger schools in the States. So I would say comparable to like Miami Hurricanes. We never lost, ever, right? My last year playing football, my last season, we lost. We lost our last championship game. We won the championship every single year. Probably in the last 10, 10 years, if you wanted to go to the national championship, you would, people else, it was so easy to recruit to our school because if you went to St. Mary's, you'd win your conference and go to the national championship, period. So here I am, a athlete who's been in the highest level, almost drafted, coming to a sport where I've, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it's like to lose. Coming, I used to lose a lot back in the day on my other teams, but this team in particular, we had a winning 
atmosphere, a winning attitude. We were just, it, that was hostile. Winning, win, 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 win. We would always win. I start bodybuilding. And the first thing I hear is, oh, man, you need to beat Greg Doucette. I'm like, who's Greg Doucette? He's like, you got to beat him. I'm like, why well, I got to beat this guy so bad? He's like, because he wins all the time. And I don't like, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's cool. He wins. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. But then it kept going further. He wins and doesn't stop winning. These, like, and people pulling out of shows. They were actually showing me that they were angry that he was still competing. And it's the same shit you hear all the time if you guys watch any kind of like IFBB or whatever. That it's like, you have your people saying like, man, this guy, the, 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 that person needs to stop competing so someone else can win. You know what I mean? Like, um, Ashley Katzwater was a, a bikini competitor, um, IFBB pro, and she kept doing shows this year and winning them. And then a couple of bikini, bikini competitors were saying she was greedy and selfish for doing shows and winning. And I'm like, what the heck? So I'm coming from a sport where we always won. Like, that's what you do. You don't, you don't say, hey, man, we won two championships Let's just, you know, lose this year so someone else can win. The f that, that is like, that eked me. I was like, what? And then I'm coming to a sh a, 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 another sport where the mentality is you can't win as much. Because if you do win too much, you're three. Yeah, I was a back as a cover. I was a uh, I played boundary boundary halfback, so it was like a it was like a cornerback, a bare cornerback that covered inside slots. Anyway, that's that is the um, yes, we won every year um, from two thousand seven till two thousand ten, and then two thousand eleven we lost the uh, our our conference champion. I'm talking conference championships. We would never lose a conference championship. Um, contact me on coaching, guys. Uh, just get, email me at hardcore.training02 at gmail.com. <laughs> I play I play corner. In Canada, in Canada we have in Canada we have 12 guys in the field instead of eleven. So we have and most of the time it's in like a 32 set. So you're looking at like a three wide, two, two boundaries. So three wide receivers, two boundary receivers. In the States, you guys have a lot of different um I would say variations of your slot of your field. So when you look at the field as a defense, you're looking at like a 32, which would be three wide, three receivers, two receivers on the boundary, a 23, um, a 22 would be two and two, um, you know, 31. So you guys have those, but you don't have as many. When you guys do a three wide, you only have one running back in the backfield. So when it comes down to that, so your ins your cornerback would be your slot back, or sorry, your boundary halfback would be similar to. I would say a safety. He's just another kind of a safety that's a little lower, um, that's playing a little more up. Still playing coverage, cut and cloud and everything else. So oh, I miss football, y'all, man. <laughs> I miss football. Anyway, guys, so I thought it would, you know, I thought I would just kind of share that, man. It's like, you know, I, I get the, I understand that there is a need for people out there that want to know the difference between what I can achieve. You know, can I really achieve a physique like that, you know, being natural? Now, if I showed you my physique, you know, when I was in 2010, it's like, um, no, if you have my genetics. Even as a natural athlete then, it's like, I can't tell you you can be me because you can't. So the natty or not things are, are good in the extent to kind of like, you know, get the information that you, what you, what you can and cannot achieve. Um, but, you know... That's that's all it is really for. I, I it, if you want to know what you can and can't achieve, I think you should get off the genetic train. And I know there's a, a huge, you know, everyone's always talking about like genetics, this genetics that. I have an athlete who just hired me, and he's like, dude, I don't have the genetics to do this. And I hear that all the time, and I'm like, and I get it. And the people have superior genetics, but that does not mean that you can't make your own. You can't make the best out of your genetics. I don't. Jay Cutler has good genetics to get big. But as a bodybuilder, Jay Cutler's genetics weren't as amazing as Ronnie Coleman, Sean Ray, Kevin Leverone, um, Chris Cormier, you know, those guys. But the guy won four Olympias. So when we get stuck on, you know, when we get stuck on genetics, this, genetics, that, yes, people have – genetics really only matter, when, in, my, in my opinion, genetics only matter if you're going to play a professional sport. Like – if I want to play basketball, 
I don't have the genetics to play basketball, right? I'm not six foot plus, and I don't have Muggsy Bogues skills as a short dude either. So I don't have that genetic ability to have good hand-eye coordination, I guess, to dribble the ball and a jump high. But my genetics have me running really fast this way and being really strong and be able to catch, right? So I can play that sport genetically. When it comes to building your fucking physique, everybody has the ability to build a physique with whatever they have, right? I don't have big, I don't have, my biceps don't peak well, but I can still grow my biceps. They might not grow as fast as some other part of your body, but does it mean that just because you don't have superior genetics that you won't be able to grow a good physique? You build the physique that you have. As a coach, that's what I do. I don't just give you, here's a plan and go do this. I look at your physique and I base your plan around what we got to do. Like, okay, so you don't have the genetics. You don't have a really small waist. Okay, so we build bigger shoulders and bigger back, right? And that's how you look at it. So a couple of things, just don't get, don't get stuck on, on the genetic train. Yes, you might not have the best genetics to maybe play a professional sport, but when it comes to bodybuilding, changing your physique to have the best physique, you could have a world-class physique without having the best genetics. You know why? Because they have stuff out there to help you with that. If you want to be natural, you can do it natural and have a great physique and have the best, you know, have a nice physique, world-class physique. And you can be not natural and, and um, unnatural and have a world-class physique. You can't tell me that everybody who has, who's a model or um, a professional bodybuilder has the most superior gen genetics. That is purely opinion. That is an opinion. For me to say that you have good genetics or you don't have good genetics or whatever it is, I would have to have so much more information about you to even deem that somewhat true. Make sense? So that's why I don't do like night or not. So I don't want to go down that road of whatever. I did the whole like, you know, how not to prove, how, well, you know, what not to do if you're trying to prove United status. That's just funny because like I just, you know, I don't really care if Tyrone Beckham is natty or whoever. Is, I don't really care. It's just like if you're going to explain yourself and say that you're innocent, at least sound like you actually are innocent. That's why I like kind of doing those. Those are funny. But I'm not saying you're not, you're not natural. And even in the Cali Muscle video, I was like, we all know he's not natural. Right? So, anyway. Look at, oh man, Roly looks absolutely insane. Even, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you compare genetics, you know what I'm saying? To like, when you're comparing like, you know, Olympia genetics. Like, Ian Valer. Ian Valer, I wouldn't say, has superior genetics. Ian Valer has an amazing work ethic. Right? And he can build his physique and works right. I don't think he just woke up and he's like, hey, man, um, you know, I got the best. I, no, like there's a lot of guys out there who don't have the best genetics. Um, Antoine Vaillant, he's got great genetics and different body parts, but like he doesn't have a big wide back. He has to build his back. Are we going to say that he has more superior genetics than than Ian Valer? No. Right. Everybody has their genetic potential or their predisposition where they have you know one group muscle group builds better than the other but as a whole as a genetic standpoint i feel like right now everybody and anybody can make can create the physique they can the one the thing that holds people back from making the physique they want is they're too fat period you take a physique and put it within a healthy body fat i can guarantee you almost like more than half of the people who have the right mindset can create a world-class physique period Right, but if you're saying if you're, if you're comparing what's world class physique, oh, uh, you have to have a twenty six inch waist and a sixty two inch chest. Come on, man, let's figure it out. Anybody and everybody can look good these days. So that's my standpoint on it, right? I don't agree with everything that Greg or anybody does. You know, Greg's my best friend, and I want to get that clear. I don't, we don't, I don't agree with everything. Says you should listen to us when we actually argue, when we actually we argue, we debate. And I, we have polar opposites on certain things, right? That's, and, and that's what keeps us kind of like, you know, consistent because we're honest. I don't believe in doing that or not videos. I never will do one. And I also don't really overemphasize genetics. If I get a new athlete um, and I look at them, I'm like, okay, what do they have? You know, what, what, what are we working with? Then I take him like a car. It's like, okay, cool. I can take a Honda and soup the shit out of it. 
and to make it running just like a race car. Will it be a race car? No. Does a race car need much up, up, uh, uh, much upgrades? No. But you can make any car freaking dope. Can you not? Right? And a car is not as, as you know, amazing as what the body can actually do. You put the body in a place where it has to change and adapt. The difference between you changing and adapting is just this thing. How, how hard are you willing to work to really get to your goals? I think the guys who are in the Olympia that were were emphasizing genetics so much on that, I think we're not really emphasizing the, the obvious, which is the mindset. Like, to suffer and go through that all the time. Bodybuilders have a genetic predisposition of having a really good mindset and, and discipline to sit there and be like, I will suffer and stick to this diet and do what I need to do. Right? There's a big question here I want to, I want to look at. I'm in a wheelchair. I was born with a horrible genetic and still try to do better with me. I want to look good, but I'm not caught up in being something I'm not. Just want to be. And dude, man, like, um, what's his name? The guy, I, I, I know him, the, the, the guy who started the wheelchair, Olympia in bodybuilding. Right? Like, you, you have what you, you, you were, you have what you're born with. Here's the cards you got. Now, do your best with what the cards you're dealt with. Period. And you can, and you, and it's your choice. You either say that your genetic, pre, your genetic standpoint is a, is something that's going to fuel you to get better, or you can say that your genetic is something that's going to keep you back from doing anything, and, and that's your excuse. I can't do this because of my genetics. Someone said my genetics aren't good enough. I don't have a 22-inch waist and a 59-inch damn chest and the biggest chest like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That doesn't, that doesn't say anything to me. It just says that, that says nothing to me. Talking about proven genetics. You want to see genetics? Genetics is like, that guy can naturally run a 4-3-40. That guy's got a 46-inch vert naturally. That's genetics to me. You know what I mean? That is, that's genetics. That guy can, that person can, has great hand-eye coordination. You know, that's, that's genetics. Building muscle is work and discipline. Anyway. Exactly. 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 Thank you. Guys, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make some comments. Comments down there. Com what, what do you guys really think about Natty or Nots and genetics? Let me know what you guys think. If you guys, you know, if you like it, right, just comment down there. Let's get some more of this going. I like doing these, these lives. Anyway, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, all right? And actually follow me on Instagram, underscore Johnny Shreve, underscore. My shit was hacked a few, uh, well, actually, a few months ago, and I haven't got it back. That's my wife. Hey, wifey. Yeah, and then um, that's about it. What are you looking for? The other iPad? It's in the living room. We iPhone family here. Anyway, progressive overload your life. Right. <laughs> In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.